This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Welcome back. We're looking at uh, the Indian space program, not just Chandrayaan, a lot more. Well, the Chandrayaan mission created so much uh, of a buzz in the country. There was so much of the sense of uh, excitement, Pallav, you'd agree. But uh, if there's anything that really uh, inspires uh, so many people out there, it's to see another Indian in space uh, after Wing Commander uh, Rakesh Sharma. Are there any questions over here for uh, the Wing Commander? Go ahead. Good evening, sir. I would like to ask you that after this mission has been launched and after whatever development that has happened over the years, do you think now finally India has arrived in the forte of space? Yeah, uh, most certainly. I feel that, uh, uh, personally, I feel that ISRO could have uh, really done this a bit earlier. But uh, as we all know, at that time, ISRO was busy translating uh, uh, Vikram Sarabhai's vision, which they have done so successfully over the years. So I suppose today our space program is really mature to go to the next level, and that is the next logical step would be to get into the manned space uh, uh, program. So I, we are all waiting expectantly. Dr. Nair is there, of course, and uh, we all know that uh, the proposal is lying with the government, and we hope that very soon that this is going to be accepted and uh, ISRO get started with this new challenge, which is going to be of a different level. Because I believe to realize all our aims, first, of course, we have to have a roadmap, and then we have to have a new vision in which the manned space uh, program will play a, a key role, because now we are getting into exploration after having mastered applications. Dr. Nair, what's the scoop? Are you, uh, are you taking ISRO or are you taking us, uh, any of us, actually, to, to space? I mean, have you been given the go-ahead? for a manned Indian uh, space mission? Well, I, I wish I could do it tomorrow, but uh, you know, sending a person to the orbit is very easy, but to bring him back safely is a big <laughs> challenge. So we are on the job. Our teams have already made an assessment about what kind of a module we have to develop to provide a life support in the environment of a space, especially under the zero-g conditions, with a lot of radiation coming from all around, et cetera and also to how to manage a mission absolutely safely and any part of the mission we should be able to jettison and bring back the person. Thirdly, of course, even to train the astronauts is a big job. So all this job content we have assessed is a huge technical challenge before us. Even if you put all our resources in place, it is going to take about six to seven years before we can achieve this task. We have prepared a project report. We are in the process of getting government approvals. If everything comes all right before 2015, we will have this dream come true. Okay. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, yeah. Look at look at the number of uh, <laughs> look at the number of hands uh, over there. All right. Uh, who have I not asked? Okay. This this gentleman in the back, right over there. And and we'll come to to all of you as well. Yeah. Go uh, ahead, sir. Uh, Madhuran, sir. I have uh, two related questions. The first one is sometime back, you know. China shot down one of its satellites. So are we moving on those lines sometime in the future? And the second is, uh, sometime by, back I read an article wherein we were talking about uh, a lot of debris in uh, outer space. So when we launch a satellite, do we actually uh, you know, plan its trajectory in such a way that there is no collision, or are the chances really minimal? These are my two questions. Thank you. Well, I will add to the first part. Yes, of course, uh, we, we have the problem of uh, re the Chinese technology and our technology, if we compare, we have got almost all the technology what is required for such a job. But we don't believe in uh, shooting down a satellite or creating debris in the orbit. We can do anytime if you want and if a need arises. But uh, regarding the problem of collision and the type of space debris, I would request my colleague Dr. Radhakrishnan to respond. In fact, you know, there is an organization which uh, works under the UN Committee on Peaceful Use of Outer Space, where observations are made of the objects. And the debris come for two reasons. One, the satellite has completed its life, or some parts which are coming out of it. It is estimated there are about 6,000 such bodies, and we can precisely find out what are their orbital parameters. We also study whether some of these debris are going to impact on an existing live satellite. The study is going on. 
we also do when we launch a satellite for example we find the probability of any of those debris hitting the rocket or the satellite mm -hmm. and we make minor adjustments in the lift off time so this is something which is going on so cataloging these objects and studying these objects is an important part which we do there is also one thing you must understand the ability to predict its falling down is another important aspect and i should say we have been participating in this experiment along with some of our global partners and last 3 years we have been precisely doing this and we got probably the first and second position in calculating a given object how it will fall when it will fall so that's the kind of analytical ability that we have got in the country today observation of course this requires very precise large systems which of course we get the information from outside right. well i also actually uh, because we've been looking so much at um, the scientific aspect of uh, of the moon mission and the indian space program i actually wanted to go across uh, to malika sarabhai once again uh, malika uh, as as a dancer as a dancer yourself um, you would appreciate the cultural dimension of the moon uh, what does the moon mean for you as a dancer um if i was your normal bharatanatyam dancer i could have given you lots of romantic things about the moonlight falling on the breasts of radha as krishna describes her in jay deva's geeta govind but unfortunately that's not quite my style and i look at the moon much more as a planetary object than as a romantic uh, object that most artists would look at it all right i'm not sure how i can counter question you uh, on that uh, they say that uh, that artists are scientists uh, as well i mean what you do is almost uh, perfect from a scientific point of view well we'll take uh, another uh, short break uh, at this stage and look at various aspects uh, of uh, the indian space program stay tuned